All right, guys, welcome back to another Dolphin Computer Service video. Today we are finally doing the topic about the resale value of laptops. I've gotten a bunch of questions about that and about resale value of computers in general. So while the video is playing here, um, I want to tell you a little bit about it. It's um, a, basically a gameplay of me playing uh, the first Fallout um, on the power book that we recovered from the school in southern california that was gotten rid of so you know i'm gonna be doing this more often whenever i do videos like this it gives you something to look at as i terribly try to play uh f the very first fallout that ever came out um i'm generally terrible at video games but you know at least it gives you something to laugh at while you're while i'm talking about you know topics kind of like this uh i do have a bunch of other games i have uh the first Tomb Raider, and I have Max Payne, so we'll be alternating in between the three games, and as more games come about that I get my hands on, I'll most definitely add that to the list of games that we can play during this voiceover. So, back to the topic at hand, which is the resale value of computers. A lot of people ask me about that, and honestly, if you're going to solely base buying a computer based off of its resale value then you're kind of not buying a computer for the right reasons so while resale value is kind of important depending on the market you're in like if you're someone that repairs and flips laptops or computers then that's probably very important to you but for the sake of the business that i do which is repairing computers for you to get back to business or for you to get back to you know work or you know get back to doing however you play or do work or leisure on a laptop then it's really not that important and i'm gonna give you an example here first of all i had a client that he does taxes and he does credit repair and his computer he had called me up because his computer had quit working and he had one of these terrible HP all-in-ones that uh, that I don't recommend at all. In fact, he had three others that died previously that his technician tried to fix, and they were all suffered the same problem. And in the end, we agreed that he needed a whole new computer, and that in the end, he got a Dell Optiplex, which is one of the ones that I recommended because... I'll link of my video to it on why I recommend it. Um, and in and long story short, he is now a very happy person because in his own words, the computer is how he makes his money. Without the computer, he can't make money because he needs the tax software to do the taxes, submit them to the government, submit paperwork to different, you know, credit card companies to negotiate a better deal to, you know, help people's credit get back on track, you know. The laptop, not well, the laptop, you know, is part of it, you know, depending on how you look at it, if it's a computer or laptop. So we'll just, you know, use the broad term computer. Uh, the computer is how he makes his money. So he doesn't. So to him, resale value is not important because he could have the fanciest computer in the world. He could have a MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max. 64 gigs of RAM, the 32 core, 32 cores of graphical processing power. But if that computer isn't working, it's completely useless to him. And honestly, if you're buying a computer to use, you know, you want it to be able to do exactly what you want it to do. So you so if you're a, a gamer and you have, you know, this $10,000 gaming PC, but it can't even run Minecraft, what good is that computer to you? Or, like, this gentleman, he has uh, he has tax software, and he can't do anything with it because the computer is broken. Like, what good is it to you? So, you know, that's why, to me, resale value is really not that important for what you're going to do. So, Obviously, if you're buying thousands of these, like a school, like this MacBook, for example, this MacBook, this PowerBook Correction G4 
started off, I believe this is a base model. I haven't really done my research on it, but this one cost about $1,700. So after 20 years of usage, I got it for 40 bucks. You know, what, you know, what kind of resale value is that? And resale value really depends on, you know, the computer you get. Obviously a MacBook will have a higher resale value than, you know, some cheap $300 Walmart Acer laptop. Although there's nothing wrong with those laptops, you know, obviously, you know, a machine that costs $2,000, well, you hope will have a higher resale value than that. But resale value, you know, depends on a lot of things. You see, a computer is kind of like a car where once you leave the lot or, you know, in the case of the computer, once you get it out of the box, it loses a lot of its value. And the more specced out the computer is... In terms of, you know, like what processors, you know, how high up the ladder you chose to to upgrade this computer, the more will depreciate, which is why I usually tell customers, you know, if you want the late the a very high end laptop without paying really the high end price, wait about a year, pick yourself up a good one that's, you know, used lightly. That way, the original owner has depreciate has already paid for that depreciation. They also tell you that, you know, when buying a car. That's assuming, you know, life isn't going like Corona now and life's crazy. But, you know, that's generally when you want to get a a good deal on something that is high end. I mean, between now, you know, between one year, you know, generally, you know, the 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 gap between performance isn't that great. Maybe 10 percent, you know, at most. But, you know, you really won't notice 10% unless you're looking for something super specific you know maybe you need soft maybe there's a software that has to run you know this style of computer but that's even then that's very rare and software developers usually develop software to run on a multitude of hardware or or computers you know or OS's and all that so you know however to rebuttal myself here a little bit uh Resale value can be helpful, like this power book, for example. You know, maybe if you didn't sell it 20 years later, but let's say, you know, you're a school which usually gets funding every year to every few years of, you know, to get new equipment. You know, if you buy, you know, a bunch of $300 laptops, you know, there's only, you know, so much you can get. But if you bought like a bunch of these MacBooks, or even the unibody MacBooks, which still go easily for $200 on eBay, you know, you use it for, you know, let's say you've had it for five years, which is usually what, you know, most people have their computer for, and what most companies design the lifespan of a computer for, which is usually five years, you know, hey, if you spent $2,000 on a machine, and you got 500 bucks back, you know, just as a, you know, quick, you know, for sake of argument, you know, number, that's not bad. Obviously, you're not making all the money that you spent into the original purchase, but you could use the money that you gained by selling the computers off to a reseller or, you know, privately or however you want to sell it. You can use that to recoup some of the losses on the current purchase of your new machine. So, yes, it is important, but usually in the line of work that I do for my customers, it's really not And the reason why I'm making this video again is because a lot of customers and a lot of people have asked me about it. So what is my recommendation on a computer on how to use it? So if you're just a typical person where you're just going to go on the Internet, you know, go to Netflix, you know, type, you know, some Word documents, do some Excel spreadsheets, uh, you know, just use it until... You, until it either breaks which is my philosophy in general you, you keep using your device until it either breaks and the cost of fixing it is comparable to buying a new one or it no longer fits the needs that you have for it so believe it or not the mac mini that i made a video on a few weeks ago about the ssd going bad is a, is a good example of that. So while it is economically viable to put in a new SSD, I could get, pick up an SSD for 
20 bucks in fact i have a stack of ssds right here so that i've already paid for so i i could actually just put it in reinstall mac os and i'll be good to go but the problem is the mac mini no longer can serve the needs that i have like for this channel editing a 1080p video is a struggle for it just to export the video and in fact the tablet that i'm recording this on does the job tenfold better so you know even though i can easily upgrade it and you know restore it back to its original condition it still doesn't change the fact that it no longer fits my needs so if let's say you know back to the original topic that you are a you know let's say you're a, a person that has a laptop but you know they they really want to upgrade you know by all means, you know, it's your money, it's your life, do whatever you want. But, you know, getting a new computer is actually kind of a difficult thing, especially now with chip shortages where you even getting one is kind of a hard thing to do or you have to wait, you know, six months, eight months, if you're lucky, three months, you know. And two, you know, transferring over everything does take time. It's it's a big pain. Even if you have everything saved to the cloud, you have to re-download it. And even with computers like Mac OS, where you can plug in one cable and transfer it over, you still have to wait quite a bit. And if you're one of these content creators that has a lot of stuff on their computer, you know, that's a lot of time that you could, you know, be doing otherwise if you had just left your computer be. And for businesses, you know, logging in, you know, having to set up the computer back for your, you know, for your employee, having to download everything again, having to sign in credentials, have, you know, whitelisting, you know, IP addresses, you know, it can be a, a really big pain to transfer everything over from one computer to another or just setting up a whole new computer. So, you know. Just because, you know, Dell, HP, Apple, or Sony have the latest, just put out the latest and greatest product, you know, it's it's not as easy as, you know, just going to the store and picking it up. No, there's usually a lot involved, especially on the business end with, you know, setting up a new computer, which is why a lot of times you don't see businesses constantly you know, getting new computers and all that. Schools are usually different because they get funding. But schools, a school computer is also a different case because school computers tend to be abused. They tend to get, you know, be when, especially when they're given to students, you know, in the high school and earlier, you know, from elementary and up all the way up to high school. And even when colleges and universities give students laptops, they generally live a very hard life, especially laptops, which are, of course, mobile. You know, they get tossed around, they get thrown in the cars, they get left on the roofs of cars. That's a very common one I get that the student, someone accidentally left their their MacBook or their laptop on the roof of their car. They got in their car, totally forgot about it, drove away, and then when they go, went to the first stop sign and they tapped on the brake, it slid off the roof and went slide 30 feet on the asphalt and now they need a new screen and you everything you know yeah it, believe it or not it, it's pretty common that that happens but um but you know usually that's why schools usually you know they have a more active uh upgrade and replacement program is because usually they live a hard life uh even the desktop ones schools believe it or not can be very dusty even when they are taken very well care of by custodial and staff because you know doors are constantly opening kids are coming in from you know different parts of you know town different parts of pl different places they bring in they're wearing clothes you know some especially private schools that have uniforms they're usually from cloth or wool or something you know that that attracts dust very well so, you know, they're walking in, they have their backpacks, which, you know, God knows, been washed, you know, probably never. The the first, the last time they were clean was when they pulled it off of Target. You know, they're bringing in their dust, you know, they have their pencils, they're erasing stuff, you know. Schools are just in general a very dusty place. And then usually, like, with, with schools like that, or just large buildings in general that have a, an air conditioning system that feeds the entire building, you know dust from one area gets put into another 
quite easily. You know, the if you ever open one up, you know, you'll see what I mean. Open up a school computer that they are very dusty. They're usually, again, even though they're desktops, they're not taken care of that well. You know, they don't get they don't get cleaned very often. The only time they do get cleaned is when they call me to come and fix the problem. And I'm, since I'm already in the computer, I'll clean it, you know. So even though a, a desktop doesn't get the same amount of abuse as, let's say, a laptop, um, they still get abused, you know. And like I said in the previous video, heat is the number one enemy of a computer. So once that dust gets in and prevents airflow, if it gets hot enough, you know, it will eventually kill the computer or prevent the com computer from even starting because if it's constant, if the computer sees I'm constantly overheating, it'll just prevent itself from turning on. And dust, believe it or not, can conduct electricity and short things out, you know, prevent the computer from booting up because the motherboard sees a voltage where there shouldn't be and it'll just prevent, you know, to prevent itself from being damaged and might not turn on it might not turn on so yes you know computers and schools do live hard lives and even in businesses you know where there's a bunch of uh where all they're doing is you know let's say a customer service call center you know where they're just in front of the computer typing away you know they do you know business computers do generally have hard lives and in fact a lot of computers they don't even turn off the only time they turn off when a power outage happens or you know i come in to you know do uh, some service on it where I have to turn the computer off. You know, a lot of those computers, they'll stay on for all their, for basically all their lives. You know, they, they never see, you know, the power button get used ever again once besides the initial power on. So, um, this laptop, believe it or not, that you see in front of you, this power book is actually the exception because usually when they come from schools, they usually get used and abused. And this is, a uh, survivor uh i haven't opened it up yet getting a little off topic here i haven't opened it up yet because um to open this thing up is actually kind of a pain um to say the least uh it's not one of their more friendly uh models that they made for serviceability but you know at the moment it's working fine so i i, I just let it be at the moment so again you know resale value also depends on other things besides age um Resale value also depends on condition, you know, since we're on the topic of how hard live, how hard of a life some of these things can, can, can experience, um, like your car, you know, once you get into an accident and it's on record, you know, the, the value tends to drop almost like a stone, you know, and a computer's no different. Once you drop it and there's a ding or a scratch, you know, that what let you pay two thousand dollars for a brand new MacBook, and let's say the next day you accidentally drop it, and all you have is a little dent, you know, on the corner of the aluminum body. Well, that probably shaved off a few hundred bucks, you know, depending on how intensive the scratch or the dent is, you know. That's you know, so if you're buying a computer based off of you know just resale value, you basically can't even open it out of its shrink wrap because once you open it it loses its value because now it's considered used. It's not even a new product anymore. So you can't command the same amount of, you know, money as if you went to as Best Buy can versus you on eBay. So, so back to what I was saying is when you should you really change computers? Um, that's not necessarily a straight answer, but my rule of thumb is if it's completely dead and it's too, and it's more expensive or just as expensive to fix it, as it is to get as it is to go out and buy a new one then by all means go buy a new one and let's say if you're you know uh like a, a parent and you've had like a unibody macbook for you know all these years you know i still have my 2011 unibody macbook believe it or not you know and you have a kid that's about to you know go into high school or middle school or even college and you really don't want to spend the money, you know, on a laptop for them because, you know, it's going to get, you know, lost, stolen or, you know, be abused. Then by all means, give them that one and then splurge on yourself if you want. But um, that's generally how, you know, I view it, which is you get it either when you're forced to get it because it dies or because like for me in the Mac mini, it's 
it just can no longer serve your your needs on what you want it to do and you know we're human our needs change all the time uh, i bought the mac mini you know many many years ago because you know it was perfect for what i wanted i could run it as a minecraft server which is what it did for a lot of its life i was able to edit some uh music files on it which it still does very well audio isn't as intensive as video and you know if you just want to talk to your friends on discord or skype or you know just watch some movies it's more than capable of doing that you know you don't need the latest and greatest computer just to see your netflix video at 1080p you know <laughs> and all of that you know it's always you know perf it's always a good idea to get the computer you know based off of what your budget allows and what you're really going to do there's like you know a lot of students when i when i worked you know at the at the local college campus store a lot of students they would buy this three thousand plus dollar 16 inch macbook pro and all they did was watch netflix and youtube you know like what's the i get it you know the macbook looks pretty but you know do you really need to spend three thousand dollars on that and then there's other people like in the engineering department where they absolutely needed a three thousand dollar macbook to run autocad and all that and then they would buy a macbook air that could barely you know go to the start menu on autocad um you don't want to be on either side of that spectrum when you're buying a computer um because you know it's never you're just gonna either be wasting money you're gonna be wasting really money either way if you go too expensive or too cheap because if you go too expensive uh, well, the only benefit of going too expensive is now you can keep the laptop for longer. You can, you know, instead of having to upgrade after five years, you could do it, which is what I normally do. Just keep using it until you can no longer use it anymore because it's so old or it's just too expensive to fix. Or if you go too cheap, then it either you're either just frustrated with it all the time. I remember my dad had bought some super cheap laptop back in the day when I was a little kid. And he was so frustrated with it that he actually punched it several times <laughs> on the keyboard to the point where the keyboard looked like the ocean in the middle of a hurricane. And he ended up, you know, just he punched it so hard he threw it. And the, comp the only thing that was saveable from that computer was the hard drive. <laughs> and believe it or not, I used that I cloned that hard drive and I would use it to to get other computers up and running just to test them so i could you know at least you know part them out to someone that needed it so you know so then in the end you know like he spent you know he spent like i think 300 dollars on it so it was some cheap dell uh no it was some yeah it was some cheap dell just a a few months later go back to best buy and then spend even more money on an actually good toshiba laptop you know so really you know you you don't really win when you go to both sides of the spectrum usually for computers i get um for you know if it's for you know like business or if it's for business i actually you know look at your needs like the tax guy you know you look at the software you look at the the minimum recommendations there's usually a minimum a minimum a recommended and a recommended sometimes there's even you know like a, a preferred it depends on, you know, how the software company wants to treat you or, you know, decides, you know, how thick they want their brochure. But generally, you know, when I do something for for a, for a business or a client, and even if it's just a, a someone calling me for personal reasons, you know, saying, hey, you know, my computer just died. You know, this is my budget. What do you think is good for me? You know, I look at your needs, you know, and based off of what your needs and what you need to do, I'll recommend you a computer uh based off of what you've reckon what you've told me what you do or what the software asked for like with the tax guy you know it wasn't really anything complicated i ended up uh, getting him a dell optiplex i believe it was a 9020 with a with a fifth gen i5 i don't remember off the top of my head and eight gigabytes of ram since the old hard drive believe it or not worked for him he was i was actually able to just input his old hard drive and you know he just boots straight off of it and the hard drive that the computer did come with i actually formatted it and i use it as a backup because as i always say in every video you should always back up your data you never know and for him he got lucky because since the hard drive was still good 
he still had all his data, and now that he has an extra hard drive, he now has backups for it, and he's super happy about that. You know, and another reason why I recommended the Dell Optiplex is because they rarely fail. They're built like tanks, and if they do fail, everything is easy to get. There's everything is standard sized parts. I can go to a Tiger Direct, I could go to a Best Buy, or I could just go to my parts bin and just pick up a part, put it in, and he's back up and running. Because like he says, you know, the computer, the computer is how he makes his money. It's not by selling computers that makes him his money once he's done with them or you know they've or he just decides to upgrade it's the fact that he has a computer to do his work that makes him the money so honestly if you're a business that's really the only way the only way you should be thinking of in terms of a computer is when is will this computer make me money when you know I have my employee or you know whoever is using the computer to do their job and will it do it well you know you don't you don't want to get some cheap laptop or some cheap computer where you know your employee eventually becomes like my dad and just punches it because it can barely do anything you know you want to you want normally what i go for is the middle of the road approach you don't want the super base model because you know really the super base model is basically just for looks (laughs) honestly you know it's like buying a a Mustang with a two cylinder engine, if that even exists, you know, what's the point of, you know, of this fast looking, you know, vehicle when you can barely do 30 miles an hour. Um, so I don't, unless, and I rarely, rarely, rarely go to the very high end. There's only a few cases where you go to the high end, you know, let's say if you're a recording studio or a movie production studio where you absolutely will use all that horsepower it's very rare that I go there. Normally, I go through the middle of the road approach, which is, in fact, what's going to happen when I get my new MacBook Pro. I want to get the, the middle one, which is the 16 core and uh, G- CPU. And uh, I believe it's a 16 core. Again, I don't know off the top of my head. It's a 16 core CPU. It's actually a 10 core cpu and a 16 core gpu so again why am i doing that one is because i believe that that will fit my needs for editing perfectly too i'm the kind of person that likes to do the most with as little possible i don't like you know to have you know two different computers a windows computer to serve as windows and a mac computer to run you know to serve as mac computers i like to just do one computer that i could do both i could dual boot you know It has all the ports I need, or I could just, you know, easily plug something in. Two, I like the MagSafe idea because me, that is a walking, tripping hazard for my size 15 feet. It is very common that, you know, you pull a cable and when you're in your server room or any room in general where there's a lot of cables, you're bound to trip on something. So it's always nice that, you know, if I accidentally trip on, you know, my MacBook cable, I'm not going to rip the port out of the computer. It'll just safely detach from the magnet. Um, also, you know, I, usually when you go middle of the road, you'll get usually more than five years out of it because, you know, the specs are high enough where you can easily get 10. I mean, even with the, with this 2011, I have, I got the 16 gigs of Ram with the, with the core I five, which, which is the middle of the road. I believe at what, at when I, when that one was ordered, they had an i3, and then they had an i5, and then they had an i7. So the i5 one was, you know, I mean, to this day, believe it or not, it still works perfectly, you know, especially if you're just going to, you know, do what most people do, which is watch Netflix, you know, YouTube, Excel, Word, you know, submit homework. You know, the middle of the road is always a safe bet when it comes to computers. You know, I know, I always tell my customers, don't go super cheap, you know. And again, with back to the Dell, you know, the Dell... If you ever need to upgrade, instead of having to buy a whole new computer, it's just two parts you need to get, and you're back up and running. So, um, as the video finishes here, I've basically talked about what my thoughts are on resale value of laptops. Is um, is basically it. Um, this is the end of the video for now. Um, believe it or not, this uh, gameplay of me uh, trying. Where am I here? I'm trying to get into the vault i believe or trying to figure out where the hell i am but uh anyway as these uh as i do more videos like this i will continue to record gameplay of me playing terribly 
the next game I will do will be Tomb Raider. I actually like Tomb Raider. Um, I've never played the first one, so that's going to be interesting. And um, if you played it like on PS4 or PlayStation 5 or even for the PC, you know, the latest one, the, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is the last Tomb Raider I played, um, it's completely different <laughs> than uh, that Tomb Raider than what you're going to see when I play it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope to see you all in the next one.